Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand. I'm here joined by... Sholo Maridueña, and you're listening to Lone Lobos, uh, the free version of the podcast. If you want to listen to Lobitos Exclusivos, the ad-free extended version of the podcast, check out our Supercast! Or you can go to LoneLobos.com. And if you cannot, we still love you and wish you the best. This week on Lone Lobos. Like orange, blue orange. For the more episodes to come, that <gasps> color starts to mean something different. For what? the remaining episodes, set a goal for you so you really know your content. And then once you're on set, just let it go and just let it flow. I used to tag film sets all the time on Warner Brothers right around with my little bandana and the you BMX. You said you drew on the inside of Ralph's car, didn't you? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. And they just kept letting me, the doors just kept opening up. But the, you know. Uh, um, it pays to be ethnically ambiguous, the, you heard? Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Come on, come on. That's great. Wait, yeah, wait, good, wait. Good, we got to welcome you. We have Mr. A. Martinez on the podcast. Thanks. Welcome him. You know him as the DP of some of your favorite shows, i.e. The Lincoln Lawyer, Obliterated, and of course, most recently, Cobra Kai. Um, he is a Texas native. Go. University go, of North Texas? Yeah, University of North Texas. What's the, what's the mascot? Go Rams. Go Rams. Go Rams. But now he's in LA, <laughs> but he also travels the world. He's yeah. filming everywhere. Um, thank you so much for blessing the podcast. Obviously, Habibi is still out of town. He's in Korea. We hope he gets back safely, bro. We miss you. Um, but we have an even better guest. Uh, Abe, thank you for, for joining the pod. Well, thank you for ha having me. <laughs> thank you for representing what is behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like my my people are over there <laughs> behind Black Magic <laughs> and on the dial. Uh, much love for the crew behind the scenes on every project worldwide. So happy to be here with you. Are you a little nervous? I am nervous because I'm not in front of the camera usually. I got, uh, I'm still, you know. It's still, yeah. Still it's trying to adjust to uh, being on this side. You're so, look, you're so chill. I mean, I'm. we're always, you and I both, are always shooting on set. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a feeling that at least this most recent season, it kind of has created the effect of like, you're always, you might always be on camera. I'm always looking at the, our big three, Josh, John and Hayden, who created the show. And sometimes they'll be in a shot and they're like, they get, <laughs> they get yeah. super awkward, but not you, bro. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming on the pod. We are chatting all things cameras today, all things Los Angelesisms, uh, but really just wanting to get to know you and, uh, you know, if, if to, to let you in on the pod, if this is your first episode, if this is your 100th episode listening, you know, our goal when we bring guests on is to, to put our audience onto awesome people and you're certified awesome, bro. We, well, we love you and it's been such a journey, especially like yeah, with totally. you on this show. True. So it's, it's, gonna be a really nice chat so thanks for getting to be here bro yeah um, i mean it's come full circle you know from season one of cobra kai because we didn't know what we we're getting involved in and here we are it's true like we built a family for sure and also the industry has changed a lot too yeah and for anything for everyone out there it's like i hope to really just inspire you know the youth yeah. and, and of all backgrounds really to know that you know what the dream may be the roadmap may be different for everybody but keep going because I'm enjoy enjoying this journey so yeah. much and it just seems never to stop really. So, and you're always growing as an artist and that's kind of the zone we live in yeah. is, is our artistry that we all collaborate together even right now and, you know, the next project and the next project. So yeah. I'm happy to hear and uh, share. And you're doing it now. I mean, you're getting to really, I feel, come into now the fruits of, of everything that you've kind of been working for. I, I, I think of... <clears throat> we were just chatting about the early, early days of <clears throat> of Abe in, in your photography and videography and thinking all the way up to now getting to be a DP for like this show that for better or for worse is seen by millions of people worldwide. Like the, the stuff that you're putting together is being seen by everyone and it's really, and and it's inflicting positive change 
it's not like everyone's seeing it and it's a world star clip of someone getting beat up on the street, but you're doing something that's that's really kind of uh, revolutionary. And I'm so excited that you've kind of been able to grow into this as well, because for those of y'all who are kind of, uh, who are meeting Abe for the first time, Abe, although he now is a director of photography, he once on our show in the first season was a, am I getting this correct? The B camera op or A camera op? B, yes. B I was camera op. B camera operator. Um, Which is the dude manning the the yeah. the second camera. If yeah. you have, you know, you always, of course, have one camera on set. But if you're blessed to have a second camera, you have, you get Abe. Yeah. So basically just for, in terms of definition, uh, director of photography, DP, uh, uh, is the one that's responsible for the tone of lighting, yep. uh, camera angles, how much you want in focus, how much you want out of focus. Yep. Uh, and it's really, truly like painting, uh, you know, at least from my perspective and for many. Um, so when you get the script, you try to figure out of a place of emotion as a storyteller and, and how to craft the story alongside the director and, of course, the showrunners who actually write for the tone. So there's a lot of balls in the air because it's kind of like you're the pilot on set. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 and then it's all, all sorts of other things like management, uh, and maybe not so much the creative stuff, but that seems to me to be lacking, you know, in, in terms of the industry. It's like, how do you run the set? How yeah. do you keep the morale up when, you know, when, when you're working 14 some hours? But, but yeah, so it's just a always growing process. And especially in your case, because you're actually having to take over the the dp process because you, you come in as as the camera operator you leave to do a few other shows you start getting into the dp world and then now as you come back on our sixth and final season you're the dp you have to look at the show at what once was and see all right what do i like about this what needs to be fixed and in in your case what was it that you were like oh, okay this is the Abe touch now because I could think of a few things, but I would love to hear from, you know, the horse's mouth. Like, this is what you, I thought. Yeah. Because it feels cinematic. Oh, This season does you. feel oh, like, it, it feels like a movie in all the right ways. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, well, season one, we, you know, coming to Cobra Kai, you don't really know what you're getting into. But once you see <laughs> Ralph, yeah, once you see Ralph, uh, you know, and Billy and, and, you know, Daniel and Johnny get into your frame, I literally, it's the only time in history as I felt a tear <laughs> of nostalgia go down the eyepiece and what? just drip. When we were shooting them both going- Which one? When, when they both go on the mat, because I framed up the white and they both walk into the same frame and I literally felt a tear go down my eye. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'm feeling this, everyone else is going to be feeling it. Hey, that's so crazy that you say that. We just had a few weeks ago, we had Ralph on the podcast and he said that that was the moment, that scene- was the moment that he felt like, oh, this is going to work. Like, this show has some sauce. Yes. And that was a cool yes. moment. And that was a set that was like, yeah, we were on not stage. a real location. And here you are just hitting your heart with just your love for cinema, your love yeah. for the movie, your love for the that, story. The story. Yeah. And then it became a song. So I ended up, so what happened was, when we have additional photography, I would step up from B operator to start shooting second units. So yeah. I did the, I did the scene where the flashback Billy riding the bike. Yeah. I did the montage of the tournament. Yeah. So every single because we're week, running and gunning, we're running and gunning. So every single week, I was stepping up to director of photography for certain scenes. But my friend Cameron Duncan uh, was the DP. Brought me in. Bob Wilson brought me in. I met the guys. So you start, you start. Figuring out, you know, as it's happening before you, you start figuring out mm -hmm. the look of the show and the feel. Yeah. And um, so me and Cameron were ACs on movies mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. So that's where... What's the, an AC? Uh, camera assistant. Yeah. So we were a camera assistant. Thank you. We were a camera assistant uh, on many TV shows. And that's kind of where you wor work your way up. Loader, camera assistant, operator, DP. So it's called, you know, paying your dues or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, but it was, it's interesting because when they called me back, I just did obliterated with the guys, the mm -hmm. showrunners of Cobra, Cobra Kai. They asked me to come back and they go, Abe, we want you to come back and home <laughs> to your family. Come home. And, come home. And the funny thing is when I was operator, when, every time we did the scenes with you in the dojo, yeah. uh, training from raw, right? Yeah. We, we, the, the, the character Miguel just came in just First season. open handed to learn. Right, scrubbing mats, scrubbing mats, scrubbing exactly. asbestos. Off so, the... yeah, totally. And <laughs> so, 
we were, uh, so me and Court, you know, doing beat camera, we're always kind of like the off angle shot and like doing, you know, sometimes arty and sometimes. The nuanced like, stuff. Yeah, yeah. nuance. But we were actually training there with Miguel at the same time in the dojo. So we're exercising, you know, our moves, right? Yeah. With the camera, because we have to sure. follow your hand. We have to, you know, shoot, tell the story. Sure. Then we go to the convenience store and then we shoot it for real. Oh, yeah, know? the fight. The fight. So the, the moves the that we would learn, yeah. we were in sync with him because we were in the ah, dojo. Yeah. So I took that mentality to every single show. Yeah. Queen of the South. Okay. Uh, the Shy. Yeah. Uh, every single show after that, I was always thinking like how to have muscle memory, how to see the scene. What is the body of this show? What like, is the what, body? What, what is, is the, the muscle form? memory of the show? Yeah, So sure. there was a lot of philosophy packed in to the dojo mentality, the respect of the mat, the respect of the set. <clears throat> And the respect of others. How do you do that when it's not something that, like, culturally you know? How do you how do you honor still the legitimacy of, like, for in this case, karate, or in the Shai's case, that that city being, you know, already a character? Like, how how do you then use your abilities to to enhance that a bit? Like, the thing for me is I have a core, kind of a core uh, point of view. And the point of view is uh, that is like uh, the martial arts or break dancing or all these are like expressions of, uh, of a gift mm -hmm. that one decides to use. Uh, and a lot of times from, from all the shows, from every single project I do, I see what is the gift that we're trying to have. Yeah. Uh, and what is, so it's not necessarily martial arts, it's whatever the Miguel has as yeah. a gift or Johnny and to see them as, as either they're coming from a broken place or how to put together mm -hmm. and to move forward. So sometimes if it's a gang, the gang will see your gift before your parents do. Sometimes your parents are working two jobs mm -hmm. and doesn't see your gift and can't pour into it. So the neighborhood will see your gift first. Mm -hmm. In order to say, oh, we're shooting a fight scene was, is, and I talked even with this with our with Ken and Don, and it's still my my goal is to feel the impact of of a not necessarily victory, but to have it feel the that punch, catharsis, to feel the tension uh, oh, up okay, against yeah. the rope, yeah, to feel yourself in a tight spot, and where it'd be like an underdog story or, or what it may be. But to actually feel the perseverance, the weight, yeah. the weight, because we're all broken, and a lot of people can identify like, oh, I'm a procrastinator. I can't do my homework, and then I did my homework, or whatever it may be. That's it's you, like it, it's it's whatever that the situation is. You just insert insert it in the place of of karate or insert break dancing. So for me, it's to see very gift driven. So I take the script and I say all these gifts that people have. And, mm -hmm. and you put them into the scene and how the writers write. Because the writers, the thing is you're seeking on a writer and how they write, they write with such heart. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily what's on the mat, it's the sidebar of Johnny talking to Devin in, yeah. in a hallway that's, do I want that hallway dark? Do I want the uh, slash of light hitting, hitting his chest as yeah. a little piece of hope? So <clears> you're <throat> always trying to build upon certain emotions of the point of view. So everything is point of view. What is the point of view scene? What's the point of view of the episode? What is the point of each character? Uh, sometimes I use my imagination like what was Miyagi well, how do you even come up with this quote what was the yeah. backstory so in my head as a visual person which so many people do camera it's like you have to understand like do I read slow well maybe you're just so visual when you're reading you're, you're processing so much visual energy and, you're, and your teacher sees doesn't see your gift right and says hey why are you a slow reader? Well, I'm not. See, I'm thinking about uh, 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 yeah. the couch or the car. So we just go through a system that's so fast, it's really hard time to slow down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, that's how I approach every scene uh, to be and to execute to the shy. The shy yeah. is teenage pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I tap into what's in my neighborhood and mm -hmm. how to identify it because we're people. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. people that have to go through that. I love that. I think you really... You really hit it on the head, and with our show in particular, like it was a a tall order because we're we're doing action as well, and you're bringing new cameras, new better cameras. But I'm really really excited and and already so pleased with what I've seen so far, because this this year did feel really kind of not like it always feels exhilarating and always feels like we're buzzing the whole way through 
But this one just felt like, oh, we're not stopping. The gas is not going to let up until we're finished. And that makes me a little nervous sometimes, honestly, just because I'm like a pretty, I guess, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why, but it just made me nervous. I was like, oh, I don't know. It feels like, did we get it? Did we, we're kind of moving on pretty quick or we're running out of light or this and that. And y'all do a real great job of staying cool, calm and collected. And even if y'all are freaking out, like not showing us, like, <laughs> so that yeah. honestly helps. Like when you're talking about keeping morale up and yeah. people working 14 hours a day, like there were hardly times and we can maybe reflect now and be like, ah, we can, you know, poke or complain or whatever. But like, there were hardly times where I was like, oh, like it, the morale is really great on set. And it's kind of, it's and unique. I hear, although like, this is kind of my, the thing that I've worked the longest on, the most on, I hear that like, that's really hard to come by. And that Definitely like. Definitely after so many seasons. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question for you, Abe. The, I have a friend who's in the like event lighting space and he's saying dude like i'm he's around my age i'm one of the only guys my age all these other guys are like 70 80 years old and it's just like the same group of guys that do it this. is and they're not teaching it to anyone right like when they die it's it's gonna be right hard to find other people for this so like as someone who wants to get into the DP world, where would I go? Like, how could I start to shadow or start to get into that position? Like, you were talking about doing a lot of free work. Um, we're talking about intergalactic, right? You're doing a lot of this kind of grinding work to get to that opportunity where then you have the preparation, but now the opportunity presents itself. If you were to do this kind of today, if you were to go back and be like, all right, I'm starting today to do this, what kind of places would I look to, to it's kind of difficult, right? Like It is, it, but the pattern's still the same. It's okay. just, uh, there are some new new inner workings uh, that I didn't have when I came up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my buddy was working on BC Boys Intergalactic, and he goes, hey, you know, I could use your help. But it was always because of budget. They just didn't have... You know, yeah. everyone has a tight budget, but then you realize how overstretched the ambition is to do it, which is like <laughs> an epic, iconic video, which I'm so glad I said yes. So I came in and loaded on uh, on BC Boys Intergalactic, and I was just like, I was, I must have I had my eyeballs popped out just looking at them just all day long, just on set. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I was a kid. Come on. Uh, but I, I, I feel like it's still the opportunity. Right now, we've been, be, we as a modern filmmakers or whatever cooking is that we're so dependent on youtube uh tutorials which is fine yeah <laughs> which is fine but in, t in terms of of your friend's stage stage lighting and yeah. craft there's something to be said about apprenticeship yeah look at miguel and johnny look at yeah, yeah just yeah. look at the legacy of, it's a lost art it's a lost art so that's what you have a sensei you have your coach you have these things so that's why with my kids i'm showing them you know what i know this is all i know is camera uh i don't but now, with the next generation, as my, my son, Zaril says, there's a lot more generalists. And sometimes, what does general, that mean? generalist yeah, yeah. means you can edit, you can shoot, you can light. Oh, like a multi-hyphenate. Yes. You're, yeah. You're yeah. like, and, you do, and, yeah. and the rate True. of learning is so fast. So I only focus on shooting. Yeah. And, and, and I get to be with <laughs> the director. Like, Damn. <laughs> I, I get to be with the director all day long. So I have a, a, a flow yeah. of, of direction, which is still part of my title in terms of direction of photography. Um, but the thing is like, you have to see your time to where you want to spend it and then just pay, just wait and wait for your turn. For, your me, it was, for me, it was a long run yeah. working at the rental house, meeting somebody who worked on Beastie Boys, then meeting his dad who shot Saturday Night yeah. Fever and then working on a picture with him, a few pictures with him as a loader and then a second and a first. So I worked my way up the camera department. And we're both so lucky to have found that at a young age. Yeah. Like I, I think, oh my God, like how fortunate like it's it's one of the biggest privileges i have to have found this thing that i want to do at 10 years old yeah. and you when you found a camera you know yeah. like you have that many years of even though let's say it wasn't work and you were just messing around with your friends or i was just doing you know theater wherever blah 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 like you're those are those are part of the 10,000 hours and those are part of that's it, right. it and that's like it's so fortunate because now you get to it's a, it's a catalyst
Yeah, and I can share how like my thought process is is um, it's kind of like a roadmap of what do you do because there's one thing to say when you're a kid and you want to be a DP or mm -hmm. a college college student and you're like I want to be a DP yeah. like that is a very clear goal right yeah. but for me it was very much baby step driven so yeah. when I was working on, and and in the beginning I was working for free on all these short films and then everyone's like you should join the union. Mm -hmm. And so that became a goal. Okay. And then I was like, well, if I pay, I'm not going to be DP, but I'm going to be a loader. <laughs> so you're there like getting coffees and loading mags. Okay. But it's a step, right? So then I got into the union, mm -hmm. which is a legacy of itself. The union that is running every show. The so, union. Yeah, the union. And then <laughs> once I got into the union, then I started working on some music videos. But then I met someone who got me on a movie. Okay. And they're like, oh, you can just rise up here in the music video world <laughs> Whoa. Uh, and then at that they were like 18 hour days and like no my second goal was I wanted to work with Emmanuel Lubeski Chivo a mm. uh, Mexican DP beautiful art and that was a goal of mine okay and then I achieved that goal <gasps> for my first studio movie big studio movie was on Ali Michael Mann Yo. and then I got to work with Michael Mann too oh, and Chivo so it was man, like a double down goal Michael Mann on the pod so Michael Mann is like my inspiration. Dude. Uh, from the very beginning. From, what well, sorry, sorry. What is the beginning? Is it Miami Vice the beginning or what's the no, beginning uh, in your- I did Ali. Oh, oh so, no, yes, of course. So I, okay. did, I, I did Ali. So I, I, I met, I was in New York. I met the DP from uh, Saturday Night Fever, Ralph Boda, AAC. And then met with his team. And then they, I, then we moved to LA, mm. my wife and I moved to LA. And then I, then I, did some pictures with him, and then I met somebody on that picture with Ralph, who was going to work with Chivo, okay. and she wanted me to be the loader. And then I was like, "Who is yes. this? Like Michael Mann, Will Smith? It was like a hundred, over a hundred million dollar movie, hundred twenty. And we were trying to won an Oscar for it. Yeah, he was nominated. Yeah, no, nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, he was nominated. And uh, um, so then. Then you make another goal. Yeah. But working with Michael Mann is very street photography driven. Like really? He's, oh, yeah. He's got Guzmano, one of his one of his uh, right-hand stylists, okay. to figure out the show style, the look. His they work on multiple cameras. So when you see Cobra Kai and we have all those cameras yeah. out, that's very Michael Mann, yeah. is to have many cameras at the same time, at the, at the same time yeah. just ready to go. Because you want to catch it. Like, you don't have to redo it. Yeah, we're... So... The concept, what I learned early on was that you want to kind of set the space for the actor and let them move and not contrive and move around. And it's very... It's a blessing, though. You don't always... It's hard to do that. Well, I never get to hear it like yeah. how we're talking right now. And to hear you say that means a lot because it's 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 a part of my process, but it's not something like, you know, we're, we're at the craft service and we're like, hey, you feel like you have a lot of room, room around. Room yeah. around. We, we don't have this conversation. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think there's something to be said. You know, yes, we have some marks and yes, we can, but it's not the end of the world if you move around. Yeah. Like, I want freedom. Yeah. So I want the performer, like, I'm only as good, as great as the performance is going to be. And if I leave a little time for, for actors and directors, then you're not going to get it's going to be very tight. Time yeah. is so tight on our show. Yeah. But that is truly a process that I felt like Michael Mann had was like lighting the space, feeling a bit yeah. of a heightened realism or a heightened naturalism. Yeah. And that's kind of the, 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 the volume or the, yeah. the antennas that it's I have yeah. is, is so all the shows I do, it might have some heightened, but it's kind of playful in that truthfulness. And I think that's a lot of the time, times what you feel that cinematic is to have a truthful or the look of the show to to feel that truthfulness because it's it's about just getting enough there yeah. to feel that truthfulness and to really feel the heart of the scene, and and to me I don't want it to feel like people noticing the camera like oh that's a cool shot that's not what I'm about I'm about to to really push the scene but you know we do so many scenes a day and that's very very tough, but yeah so set your goals. Michael Mann, and then all, it's like you set one goal, but it ends up being more than you ever yeah, think. Yeah, because you do, because then you do work with your boy, and then you do work on the Michael Mann thing. So after that, I mean, it's it's Who kind of it's so awesome to get to. Then you then you hit that goal, what you thought was the ceiling, and then you are you open the trap door, and you're like, whoa, yeah, dude, there's so much more that I could do. Like this is so. Then it became an apprenticeship, yeah. and when I opened that door, then I went to Dean Cundy apprentice under him for about three or four pictures dude and he's the dp who shot back to the future i've heard of that one uh jurassic park so i got to be on the set with him okay. and learn but not only with him but with all the team and then it went to bill pope on spider-man 3 so you just start learning and learning and it's always goal driven i was never s saying to myself i'm be a dp yeah 
when I was going through the process, I was always like, what is this achievable goal? What is it? And just kind of earning, earning, earning. And then when the opportunity came, I was, I was, I apprenticed so much with so many people. You were already, yeah, you were ready. Yeah. Okay. Quick. Uh, and before we get to like a next segment, I have some rapid fire questions. Um, one, why are you a Fuji guy? Why, why, I mean, in, in, as many words as you'd like, what is it about Fuji that you like? Fu Fuji film is my street camera, street photography. Mm -hmm. uh, it informs me of the real world uh, that I can use this, the street camera and just have it on me at all times. And basically, it gives me, allows me the control for color mm -hmm. uh, to have film simulations. So it comes packed yeah. in already with like 18 film simulations and black and white even. And and I use those film simulations because I started with film and it becomes my habit. So in, in that, uh, the real world is going by me and I want to capture it. Mm. And so it gives me a window to the world where I have to use that, this camera system to always be with me on the go, but it helps inform different shows like 61st Street or Lincoln Lawyer. Like I'm always packed in. So when it comes time for me to do a TV show, then I have the look of the show on my camera. Already. And so if I just move a few buttons in my custom settings, it's like, oh, it's Lincoln Lawyer. That's Cobra Kai. Lincoln Lawyer. That's Link Cobra Lawyer. Kai. Yeah, uh, exactly. And it's this, but it's the same shot. Like it's the same. It's, just, it's, it's the so look. Cool. It's the look and the settings that I set that gets close. Obviously, it's different la dynamic range and whatnot, but it gives me, it informs me the color palette, you know, of the shows that you see. So that's why I use Fuji. And what Fuji are you shooting on right now? Uh, this is X100. Uh, okay. Oh, dude. V1. V1. <laughs> Sold out. You can't get it, but you could want it. You <laughs> yeah, it's uh, now it's, it's become so a camera, <laughs> and, I, and before I was it's living so, my life just always know, with it. Right? No one you said were, anything. Well, because it was like sudden, Leica, it's a thing. everyone was like Leica. That's the that's the thing. What what are some of your favorite shots from this season of Oof. the show? Like when you were designing, lining up some of the shots. Like give us in this first batch of episodes some of the highlights for you, in your opinion. Well, if you want the exclusive. I, oh, uh, oh, that's what we wanted. We've been waiting this whole time. <laughs> well, the first, the first five, I really wanted to feel domestic. I really, okay. cause, cause I knew we were going to take, yeah. go somewhere, go the distance abroad. Right. We didn't know where in the beginning, where we were going, <laughs> but I w really wanted to feel that the first five felt Valley or felt Cobra Kai, okay. Cobra Kai Valley. Yeah. So it felt very domestic. However, we did go to Korea. So right. having a contrast with, with, with the valley in Korea is such a delight of mine to, yeah. figure, to play with color. So we did that. But then I wanted to grind, uh, ground the emotion into a specific symbol okay. of, of meaning. So episode 603 Ooh, with Ralph, Ralph Macchio. We know that we, guy. We ended the second episode and it's crease always playing in the shadows. And Dude, then you for see real. the cigar and the cigar goes. <sighs> okay. So let's talk about the color orange and okay. the symbolism of the show. Dude, I'm, right. I'm, I'm ready. This is the I hot. was doing my research on the color orange before you did this, yeah. for this very conversation. Because we got the logo. We have like the symbolism. I'm into even from the Karate Kid, the color yellow and the car and the, yeah. and the, and the sponge that you used uh, to, cl to, to clean the mats. So... Uh, so he, at the end of episode two, he smokes a cigar and he plays in the shadows. Yeah. So that was in our tone meeting with Joel. And like, we're all like saying, Chris likes to work the inner workings from the sideline or in the shadows and, okay. you know, the, the fire. So I took episode three and made the color orange more fiery because he's also the building of the team. Yeah. So everything was the cigar orange on episode ah. three. So even when Ralph, it's to figure out like, Chris with the cigar just pushing down on on uh, Daniel or in every situation. So that color you will see when we go to the boxing ring uh -huh. is coming through the windows. Oh, yeah. Orange. Yeah. There's orange, little bits of orange and fire. Yeah, and so yeah. it became fire. Whoa. Uh, and uh, so that, that has been the goal. Uh, That's like your and, godfather moment. It was like every time literally is. you see an orange, you know something's about to go down. Yes. But it's this like orange, looming. Orange. And then for the more episodes to come, that <gasps> color starts to mean something different. And we have to wait for what? the remaining episodes of the oh color contrast that we're about to go into. It's very <laughs> complex on the mat because what <laughs> happens on the mat, you don't know. And then, um, but, but the thing is to know that 
with fire, there's refinement, but yeah. there's also danger. Yeah. And the thing is that Kreese plays in the shadows, which in that end of episode two, he's in the moonlight, moonlight and the cigar. So you have this this duality of color that's that that's this interplay, and then the fire. So even when he when he uh, gets the snake. Uh, yeah, yeah. and the snake drops to the ground, there's like moonlight and firelight on the snake. That tight of an insert shot. There's two colors on the snake when it lands. And then when Kreese is walking up to drop off the snake of the head, he's walking in firelight, firelight. And then after he drops the snake, he has blue and fire on his face. Dude. Very, I mean, very subtle. These are like subtle things that happen at like, I don't know, 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm trying to like set, keep... Don't have blue, have orange, have blue, like constantly interplaying with color and color Dude. contrast. And the reason being is because when we see when we see his sensei in Korea is that when he first meets him, he turns around and he has orange and blue moonlight. So there's yeah. a duality of like, yeah. I'm in control here. And then he is just in the cigar. He's still he's still wilding out, like trying to figure out how to get there in that space. And anytime you work in that, that space of revenge and these things... You know, it, it it's like, how do you even bring honor to that? And yeah. it's it, it's a, a very messy. So that's what I wanted this color to be a little messy in, in, this, in this range. But I wanted to feel that orange coming because I feel like later in another scene that we do, you'll see the duality come into full play. Full play. Yeah. Like this interplay of blue and orange. Yeah. And the same with the Sakai Taikai. Yes. Like, that's right. I, you'll You'll see that in the next batch, but like... Now that you're saying this, now that I'm hearing you say this, thinking back on, because it was really once we got there to that location that I was looking around, seeing the light set up, thinking, oh, like looking at everyone's faces and seeing exactly what you're talking about, that duality of mm -hmm. this color and this color and how that really like, that's right. it adds this awesome level of depth that kind of reminds me like a bit of like, it, it's a bit sci-fi-y. That's right. Or like Correct. ABZ. Kind of, exactly like, kind of, it's right. kind of like this... This, yeah, Akira, Neo, yeah, like that's right. No, I think there's passion. There's, you know, look, c color is passion. And when you mentioned Godfather, and you're you, you, you are astute in the cinema because that's what I do. When Ralph, oh, no, not Ralph, um, um, when Al Pacino comes into that scene and he's and he finds the gun behind the toilet, yeah, and they're pouring the, the red that's on the bottle and the red. You'll always find there's color play, not for every filmmaker, because everyone has a different sensibility. Yeah. What we're really saying here is that my approach is also uh, sensation. Yeah. Like you're appealing to one sensation. Some people, uh, you know, uh, Josh is colorblind, our showrunner yeah. of the show. So certain sensations move certain people in a different way and different artists. And some people are, uh, are clinical and, and don't feel that or talk yeah. that way. So you're you're having something with passion. Red can be passion or angry. So yeah. you're really playing with those tones like on a big piano. I love it. I can't wait. Team, we have a, a new segment that we're, that we're, that we're trying where we um, stalk your Instagram basically, and and do a deeper dive. The team Ooh. has pulled some photos um, that we would love for you to explain to us what the heck is going on. Do, you, do we happen to have any of these photos? Oh we have. Not the one that, not the most recent one that I sent. Any other ones? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, here's the oh, first one. Oh, that's a good segment. I'll All like right, let's one. see, let's see. It, oh, yeah. not this one, not this Whoa. one. That one. Okay, well, oh, okay, so what's happening here? Wait, who chose this photo? Monica, so what do you want to know about this photo, Monica? <laughs> what is it? What is it? What's the story? This was, a, I, I was on the show uh, National Treasure. Oh! And we were scouting Santa Fe. Uh, and then I was there with, we, and we also had a, it was interesting, actually. I was on Obliterated, but also National Treasure at the same time, like doing two, two shows back to back. And that specific, in terms of process, because you know every single still you see on my Instagram, I go through process. Okay, so the fact that you're asking me this, it's it's like my contact sheet to the world and a specific process and discipline that I'm working on. So sometimes, you know, even if I go on a run, I'm looking for the color red, yeah. and that's all I'll look at red because you're exercising exercise that muscle. I'm looking at red. And I don't run like 45 minutes. I say I'm running to that li that lighthouse. Yeah. So I run to things that are of a form that inform my photography. So this specific 
place is, was a unique rainbow day um, that came across. So I actually was working on National Treasure, which was about Pan Lantino treasure, if you know the franchise, uh, you know, for Disney Plus. And I, I, I'm going from one show to the next to Obliterated. And so at that moment, I felt that it was like a miracle that, that God was saying, like, I see you type of thing, because I was in a place of celebration. I finished National Treasure. I was going to obliterate it. And if you were to ask me, you know, I felt it uh, coming there. But so I was, I was at a crossroads. And, and if I have to break it down, you could clearly see that there's two to crosswalk. We don't know if it's stop yeah. or go, but the rainbow says keep going. Whoa, that's, dude, I was just wondering as you were describing this, we've been talking so much about color. I was wondering if when you see a rainbow, you're just like, oh my God, like it's all the color in one. <laughs> <You're> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, this was clearly for everyone to see, but you can clearly see one side is blue, one side is, yeah. you know, the pink under there. And it's just holding that, that pink hue. Um, and just out and about. But it's messy. Just, but look, here's the thing. It's like there's... Just I mean, random. Even look, it's just random. But that was like the big moving parts. But even so, like, I, you can even ask my kids. I'm like in, you know, my like early 50s. Uh, but I still put a sticker up here and there, you know, on the stopwatch. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is when you're a kid, like to understand tagging or to understand these things is to see... Because I still went by the lamppost. I was like on a, uh, I don't know, direct TV or NFL film shoot or something in Houston. I went to the neighborhood, went to the lamppost, and I saw my name still there. <laughs> and I've already worked Super Bowls, White House, TV shows, Fast and Furious. And I see, oh, there's little AB who wrote his, his tag. Uh, the thing is like, to understand what Tag we, our walls, please. Yeah, ta yeah. So the thing is like, oh yeah, I used to tag film sets all the time on Warner Brothers right around with my little bandana and the you BMX. Mean you said you drew on the inside of Ralph's car, didn't you? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I, no, sometimes I do and sometimes I can't say because it's a union thing, so you get in trouble. But the thing is like, uh, that's that part of you is to see, like one wants would like to see their name, but instead the new tagging for me became to see my name on the credit. Yeah. Right. To see your name up there. Tag the industry. Tag the industry. And the more we see different names, and I, I you know, e even when I was in track, I'm like, I gotta get my name in there. And there somehow I'll try to break a record or something running. So for me, I think I find beauty in that still, you know, every now and then, right? Sometimes tagging goes too far, but it is a form of expression, but displaced. Yeah. Put it into your gift. Put it into your art. Sketch. Draw. Have your pen and paper. It can be for you, but know that, you know, it, for me, it all started drawing cartoons and so on and so on. Like, then photography became the thing. I definitely see the the painter in you as as we're talking. Like, we've definitely had conversations in the past about paintings, but it's, it's evident. I love it. Show us the next photo, Monica. Por favor. <clears throat> Chicago wow. Nights. Wow, you guys picked that, huh? I just I just uh, went to Chicago for the first time ever uh, two weeks ago, and I loved it. I thought the architecture boat tour was the best thing. I was I was jazzed about it. What's happening in this photo? Okay, so who's that you, woman? You, you're gonna spill all my process here um, because you're gonna now look at Instagram like, oh, he's working on this show. These are the new color vibes. <laughs> this is just straight up. 61st Street AMC TV show colors that I okay. was processing in real time because I'm on the Loose. show. Yes, I'm on the show and the city is alive. And that's my 61st Street tones that you see on the TV show with Courtney B. Vance, uh, Tozen, mm -hmm. and it's even on the CW currently. Uh, season two, promote the show to everybody. CW, 61st Street is a show that I shot, season two. And those are the color tones that I had for 61st. So you see all the blue. Yeah, what is it and that the Chicago has that lends itself to the color blue? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we went, we also went hard in the shadows too. Okay. Uh, but if you could see on her, you could see that reflection blue on the skin tone. Yeah. So if you, if you see my, my gram, in a, depending on what show I am, and sometimes people don't know, no one's ever heard of 61st Street. So when I'm shooting in real time, no one knows I'm on 61st Street. <laughs> but I'm actually exercising my muscle on skin tone, so yeah. you see the blue reflection. So what I do is I look at it, but at the same time, I share it at the same time in real time. What's what's the biggest difference about working like here in the States versus getting to 
you know, work abroad? What What are the things that you were like, oh shit, this is this is different. Well, it's always like, uh, you know, depending on where I am, I've been in some expeditions where, you know, I had my head shaved wearing a boo boo in Senegal Wait, where and, and uh, uh, flip flops. And, you know, I grew a beard and just like just getting lost in the culture. Don't say anything. And they're like, are you Arab or are you you're not American? And I'm just, <laughs> the doors just kept opening. Like I, I did a job in Senegal. And there was a team from New York, you know, and they weren't like a darker yeah. complexion. And I had the beard. I shaved my head, everything. I went Didn't all in word. camera. And and, 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 and we were in the mosque and they just kept letting me, the doors just kept opening up. But the, you know. Uh, um, it pays to be ethnically ambiguous, the, you heard? Yeah. And uh, the rest of the team was looking so soundy, like wearing the little, you know, North Face. Yeah. And the thing and the, for all Dude, the they, they, got, they got left behind the first door, bro. But, but it was a mistake because the airline lost my luggage. So I had no clothes. So I, I had to go. So I wore flip flops and I wore a boo boo. And I, and I just happened to shave a beard because I don't know what I was thinking. I was working like, oh, maybe I'll grow a beard, kind of blend in, even though it's Senegal. But they full on. The thing is, they, next thing you know it, I was up in the minaret shooting a pilgrimage in, Sen in, 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 in Senegal. What? And I was shooting on a, and then I looked across the minaret. There was an, another guy, another filmmaker, but that was from Senegal. And he looked at me and we waved at each other. And I was just like filming this uh, crazy pilgrimage in Senegal. Not crazy, but very but yeah, beautiful. Just surreal. Very surreal. And and I would sit and the, they just let me to the most inner place. Where is uh, that to, footage? To share. Uh, it's it's uh, called Tuba. It's on Prime. <gasps> uh, Tuba documentary. And the things about documentaries is you can blend in as much as you want. Yeah. Uh, and and in that case, I lost my luggage and I just happened to grow a beard. And the and the doors get unlocked. And the thing is with the camera, by and large, is that that is the key to many doors. Yeah. You walk in with a camera. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden you're in the White House. They know <laughs> your purpose. Yes. So. <laughs> It is a key of unlocking many, many doors. Sometimes they just open the door for you and just keep walking in with a camera, you know? So This I, is actually a trend on TikTok. Do you see this? No. Of people doing this and just like pretending to look official and walking like backstage concerts. Just being like, just I, whether it's with like a construction outfit with a ladder, like that's a really popular one. Just like walking with a ladder and nobody tells you anything yeah. because they're like, who the fuck carries a ladder to the concert? That, of course yeah. he's supposed to be here. Or the camera, like that's crazy. Like coming in the camera fit yeah. and just walking like you know the place, and you're just and then they're like, I got into the the blah 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 concert. This oh yeah, that. that's insane. That is so true. I got one last question for you. Um, so y'all don't. It'll already have happened by the time this episode comes out. But your son is helping direct my music video, my next music video. And I'm really excited for it. We caught it. We caught a little bit of him in the camera as he got up from the couch. So maybe we can screen grab that. Oh, no, no, you're good. You're good. Go ahead to the restroom, bro. You're good. <laughs> With half a clown shoe on, he's like, hello? Oh, no. No, you we're just going to talk about you while you're gone. Um, can you speak about, like, my mom has spent a lot of her, like, the past, the, the better part of the past decade helping teach parents that it is okay, like that your child can make money in this industry, behind the camera, behind the mic. You know, they don't have to be a singer, you know, and they don't even have to be a doctor or a lawyer. Like there is, there's opportunity in this, in these industries. Hearing you say, you know, I didn't know that this was a job. I kind of fell into this. And knowing that your children also are, budding filmmakers and and creatives how was it easy to say go for it like can you are there any words that you have for parents who who are still kind of in that in the mentality and, and like kind of the not the right but like it's a very noble mentality like I want you to make money I want you to have opportunities so you should be a doctor or you should be a lawyer these things but how do you have the confidence to to allow your child to do something in the arts Wow it's a uh, I don't know if it was ever a it point wasn't a about choice <laughs> they just did making it <laughs> money I don't know if money in our house is ever real that's kind of real, a blessing though the real conversation yeah is in terms of like where what is in your because if is the as 
you make it sound like I'm developing film or something. Like, as your child is developing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, drop. The thing is, yeah. like, I never really, we, you know, their mother's a painter, fashion designer. So we never really pushed okay, any part around. of the arts with them. They just kind of naturally started evolving into that as the artist because they grew up in museums with their mom looking at you know okay. van gogh and picasso then they're with me like rolling gels before we had led lights my kid was three rolling gels with me to spend time with pops you'd go sit in with me in color sessions <laughs> uh and just started naturally and then i got kind of cheap i'm like well can you start color grading some things for me and some samples <laughs> and so well you, no dude yeah. that's like if you would instead of being a cameraman if you were a restaurant person then you'd yeah. be the same thing it'd he be, was a dish yeah. dishwasher <laughs> but his di version of dishwasher was like on D da vinci resolve <laughs> Uh, and then uh, and he took a step further and learned Blender and Houdini. Oh, animating. And, yeah. So, uh, but I think it was a lot of times, you know, they were homeschooled their whole lives. So okay. he grew up on the road with me on show to show. So uh, I feel like you, to live a life of joy and happiness is like to see, like that to me is the real, the real money. Yeah. Um, so that's where we always place the importance on was that and then yeah. the money will follow yeah 100% is the thing so that's really the 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 mindset that needs to switch is that the currency is not necessarily money yeah that like yeah joy yeah. should really be cuz you could yeah i mean i i uh as a film owner i bought a house in la like it's hard to buy a house period here but this is like 2003 or 2003 uh 2002 or something and i'll sit in on uh, I bought a house as a loader, the very first position mm -hmm. in the business. And I think, oh, my family's like, oh, you can buy a house. And they, were, oh, yeah. they, they still didn't understand yeah, they were like, business. Oh, family, wait, what? The thing is, like, if you're not in it, you don't really understand it. It goes for anything. So it's really hard for parents Articulate. that don't know the business. But I think after time, you start seeing that. Because even my friends back home, they're like, oh, I don't have no idea what you do. I'm like, were well, you watching the Super Bowl? Yeah, we're watching the Super Bowl. Okay, well, well, you know when they do the instant replay and they show the ref looking at the monitor? I called up my friends in high school and I, when the ref was there, the camera's pointing and I go, this is what I do. I'm on the field at the Super Bowl. Like I totally, because I was working in NFL films, I could walk anywhere during the Super Bowl and I timed it so I could be on camera to say hi to my friends on, on the Super Bowl. They're like, oh, we get what you do. Uh, so They're like, you're just a cool guy? Yeah, what? it's hard It's hard to understand uh you know, how this transaction works. But so I think okay. at the end of your life, what is it, mm. you know, what is it you want to do? For me, I definitely want to make impact with the camera and help okay. see lives grow in these things. So, uh, you know, I think it's become more global, not so concentrated in Hollywood. So you can actually find a place yeah. anywhere in this business and then just let time go. But definitely know what the next goal is, is the most important thing. You yeah. Know? And you need to be prepared too, like, Unfortunately, this industry is the type where like, and many industries are where it's like, all right, the mic is passed to you. If you, if that, if you're not ready at that moment, boom, it takes a whole lot of time for that to come back around sometimes. So like. Well, even on Cobra Kai, I wake up an hour early or way early. I show up to set an hour early. No one's paying me for that first hour. Uh, I print up. Bob. The, I print up. <laughs> I print up. I print up. It, it's for me to feel the space. <laughs> There's a lot going on. No, 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 no. And uh, just I wake up, and then I have an hour at home where I print yeah. my sides up. Yeah. Where I'm just quiet. I, you know. Sometimes I play like. Yo, notebooks are Born crazy. Identity, or I play a movie, or I play soundtracks. Every this is ask my kid. This is my process. I print up the sides. I color code. I map out. I visualize where everyone's walking. So when I get to set, it's already in me day by day because I can't, you know, sometimes I shoot up to like 600 pages a year and it's like I can't memorize everything. So I wake up in the mornings for that full and I never break um, my rules of process. I do the sides for an hour. I show up to set an hour early. Mm -hmm. And the thing is to set a real high standard for you because, you know, the thing is like, there's so, you know, not to be competitive, but there's so many people out there, yeah. but set a goal for you so you really know your content, really know, just overthink and analyze it. And then once you're on set, just let it go and just let it flow. Okay. I love it, bro. Well, look, Abe, this has been a wonderful conversation, brother. Okay. Thank you for blessing the set 
we just have one last segment, and that's our Song of the Week segment. Each week, we have a playlist, an, ever low, an ever-growing playlist that we put people on to new music each week. And a, we would love for you to, to add a song to the playlist. Any Ooh. song that's been on your mind recently, a song that, that you're thinking, something Whoa, that you've been bumping recently. Like the coolest Monica podcast. and Jordan, do you guys want to go first to set us off? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, damn! <laughs> Dude, don't get an intern, Abe. Dude, just kidding. Yeah, you got yours? Sure? Yeah, my song of the week is Cordillera from Los Aranitos Verdes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, send me that Spotify my, link. My song of the week is a song by an artist I discovered. It's called Yoshi. His name is Yoshi 2.0. And the song is called Grow in Rain. What's the genre? Hyperpop. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Hyperpop, come on. That's my kid does that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, okay. Go so go on, Abe. What's your what's your? Well, I, for me, because the mindset of Monday, I I I can only say how about I just play the last song I was playing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about that? So Eric B. And Rakim paid in full. Yeah, but yeah. I don't listen. I listen to everything more new new days. Uh, try my kids inform me a lot who I listen to now. So, um, but yeah. I love that. All right. And my song of the week is I Was Wondering by Frito Burrito. <gasps> what? Oh. That's my uh that's my that's my pick of the week. Um I'm going I'm going uh I'm going saucy with this one. So check it out. Very saucy. I love that song too. All right, all right. Just listening to it. So, <laughs> that's our, that's our my tabs right now. All right, all right. Well, Abe, I I really love what's behind these cameras. This <laughs> this is like my f- this warms my heart to see you guys smiling back there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you so much. You, you dropped so much gems today. We're like, we felt like we were in class in a good way. Yeah. Like we were just like, oh, oh good. Where drinks. do we get some glasses like that, bro? I'm always, whenever, that, every Oof, time I see you, I, I see know. you in a fresh new pair of glasses. What's to give well, us? Well, I lost mine on the, the, red ones. On the way they? from, there's somewhere in Barcelona. I mean, we can say Barcelona, right? Yeah, I mean, we yeah, all know yeah. we're going there. Uh, yeah, somewhere Ooh, in Barcelona. The well-traveled know. glasses. Yeah, there's somewhere where we were Someone shooting. Picked Someone picked them up. Someone picked them up. I put their prescription and so they're not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, had, I had red prescription. I had another frame that fell on, on set on Cobra Kai and broke. Damn. And then I had contacts for a while. And then once I got back home to LA, I got the frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we love the frames on, on, on the pod. So we'll, uh, we'll be getting those later. All right. Uh, any final words, Abe? Where can we find you? Anything you want to shout out? Um, any projects? This is your camera right there. Please let the people know. Um, yes. Uh, mostly just Instagram at abe.martinez.dp. Um, I have, uh, you know, just staying low for now, working on uh, more. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to start diving into some lens tasks and get, okay. get the ball rolling for the fall. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Well, look, y'all, it's been a great episode. Remember, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Check us out. Check out our past episodes. Um, and as always, we appreciate the love. Uh, please check out our Supercast as well, where you can find the extended version of this episode. We're going to try some food. Trying some food on the pod, interviewing uh, Shelby, our intern. So we're going to really enjoy that. Um, join us over there. But until next time, we'll see you next week. Peace. Joe Flores. That's right. Yep, I'm talking to you. You know it, Joe. I wanted to thank you for being a super lobito. Salubrious society. Oh, damn. I didn't know you were posh, fam. Joe, thank you so much. Um, We are sending you our love, sending you our support. Thank you for directly supporting the Lone Lobos podcast. Um, You too can support the Lone Lobos podcast by joining the Lobitos Exclusivos at lonelobos.supercast.com. Com. That's right. Or you can just go to LoneLobos.com and find more about the pod there. Uh, we love you. And until the next one, roll the credits. This episode of Lone Lobos is a Lone Lobos production produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM with intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos. <laughs>